Okay, we're, we're here with Tom Campbell. And Tom, today I'd like to ask you a little bit about meditation. Would you consider that meditative state another reality frame? And I know you say when you get into that point consciousness, this reality disappears. So looking at it in a kind of sped up time sort of thing, can meditation be helpful in accomplishing a lot of things in what seems to be a long time but is in fact in this physical reality a very short amount of time? Well, yes, it can. What meditation does is it teaches you to let go of the data stream that defines your reality. Okay, each of us have a data stream and that data defines our reality. We interpret that data to be this reality. In World of Warcraft, we get a data stream from the computer and it lights up pixels on our screen and we look at those pixels and we interpret that pixel data as the reality of World of Warcraft with all the things in it that are there, with the motion, with the buildings, the trees, the rocks, the rivers, all of that we interpret from data describing brightness, color, on a lot of pixels. So we get data and we describe it, or we, we interpret it as this reality. Okay, so what you do when you meditate is you let go of that data stream. You stop receiving the data stream that defines this physical reality as the reality you're in. When you've let go of this reality entirely, you're no longer in it. So when you let go of that data stream entirely, you're no longer in this reality because it's the data stream that defines the reality. So that's the first thing. It's just a data stream. Meditation, you let it go. That's point consciousness. You get to a, a point of consciousness where you are just that point of consciousness floating in the void. You see nothing, hear nothing, feel nothing. You're just a point of consciousness floating in the void. That's point consciousness. And at that point, you're no longer receiving, interpreting the data stream for this physical reality, this virtual, quote, unquote, physical reality. Okay, so now when you're in that state, there are a lot of things you can do. And there's a lot of variables you have to work with. Because now you're in a, a different reality. You're in a different you can attach to a different data stream. So when you attach to a different data stream, that's not this physical reality data stream, that puts you in a different reality. Within that different reality, there's lots of things that you might do. Depends on what data stream you want to attach to. Well, how do you attach to a data stream? You use your intent, your intention to do things, your intention to understand things, your intention to cause things to happen or not to happen. Those are the things that will connect you to data streams that will fulfill that intention, you see? So it's your intent that, that lets you connect and disconnect from data streams. You intend to disconnect from this one, that's called meditation. And you disconnect and then you intend to connect to a different one and now you're in a different reality frame. Now you could call that reality frame out of body or you could call it out of mind, or you could call it out of the physical universe, or you could call it just switching the data stream. Now, once you're, let's say what you want to do is gather uh, information about some subject. Well, that's your intent. You can connect to sources of information that have that information you want different data stream. Let's say you want to do analysis on yourself. Let's say you want to find out what are, what are my fears? What kind of troubles my ego get me into? You know, do I have fears? Do I have ego? And if so, what are they? I'm doing analysis or I want to understand other people or my interaction with other people or how I could be a better employee or a better husband or a better wife or whatever. You know, these are th things you can do in that state because you're no longer processing in this physical reality. You can deal with 100% of your attention on these other subjects. Now, a long time ago, and I wrote in my books, the first section of the first book, I talk about how I used that place to, 
to uh, find flaws in programming, to find programming errors. You can do those things very intently and very efficiently. Yes, I could find errors in my programs that I was writing in graduate school in minutes that would have taken me days to find trying to one at a time flip through you know 8,000 punch cards. That's really a hard way to go trying to find an error. I could find it in that space in minutes if not seconds. The analysis that you might do about who and how you are and what you should do or should you take that new job in some far off place or should you stay here you know how will that work out let me kind of progress the probable future and see how all that works out well you can do that you couldn't do it here but you can do it as point consciousness you see and you can do things there that would take you days or weeks to do here so time is a variable that you can use there if you want to look over a long period in history you can do that in minutes. You can, as they say, look at probable futures, choices that you have to make, and what are the ramifications of those choices. You can follow out 10 different possible paths for, for 10 different choices you make and see where they lead and discover which one of those choices is likely to be the best. Not necessarily is the best, we're talking about probable future, is likely to be the best. So this is a very practical space to work in attached to other data streams and you don't have to make it exotic and quirky and woo-woo like out-of-body experiences and flying and around in other reality frames you can say all those things and that's a that's a way that those are metaphors of describing it but all that's unnecessary you are consciousness you are connected to a data stream that defines your reality there is much more than just this reality that you can connect to so go connect to other realities that are also productive for your growth. You already do that naturally called the dream reality. That's a different reality frame, a different data stream, and that's productive. We work out a lot of issues in our dreams, you see? So yes, you can, time's a variable. You can do things that very quickly that otherwise would take a very long time. You get clarity and preciseness that you wouldn't get and you couldn't get in this reality because you've got all this other data coming in and now you're trying to sort this little thread of data with all the other data and it's difficult. It's like trying to do your homework in a room full of 20 people all having conversations. It's just it's harder. If you get to that other reality frame where you're only focused on this one issue and it's very clear and if you can precisely ask your questions and present what you want to do and how you want to do it, you can find that uh, you can do things in minutes that would take you days and weeks and maybe couldn't do it all any other place. So it's a very productive space to be in. Okay, thank you, Tom. I think that's going to be helpful to a lot of people. I think my question was also, um, are there different, you always talk about time and time is fundamental. Are these different reality frames, dream reality, um, meditation reality frame, um, any other ones, do they have their own specific time? Yes, every virtual reality has its own clock. Okay? Your dream reality doesn't work on the same clock of, of, this, of your waking reality, right? They're totally different. In your dream reality, you may be go through a sequence that in time takes years. In your dream, you may progress from a child, grow up to an adult, all in the same dream. You see, time is different. It's a different sense. Here, we're in a time because the time's part of the rule set. There, time is a variable. So you can progress from a child to an adult, asking very specific questions about various phases and things and, and what leads to what and so on, and you can do all that in a minute because you're not locked into, that's not a rule set operation. Now you're in a different virtual reality with a different rule set, and time isn't the variable that drives that rule set. 
Time is just a variable that you can manipulate as you want in that rule set. So yes, you can do that. Now you can go to other reality frames and you can spend one hour of your time in a different reality frame doing things over two days. But it's only spending an hour of your time here, but you spend two days in some other reality frame, which seems like two days to you. Because again, in that reality frame, you're not necessarily pegged to the clock that's running here. You're pegged to a series of events and clock that's running there. And time passed there doesn't have to equal time passed here. It's, they're, all, they're all different. Now there is, time is fundamental in the sense that the fastest clock belongs to the larger consciousness system. All the other clocks are subsets of those. They have to run at slower frequencies. Thank you, Tom. That's very interesting, and I think that will be helpful and interesting to people. Thank you.